Hey guys, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. It's live stream night, which is Tuesday night, so I do live streams, first time here. The live stream is me and you and uh, a little bottle of something, something, and uh, we talk about trucks and things. So tonight's uh, topic, I, I randomly choose these out of a hat. Okay, that's a lie. I really don't do that. But I randomly choose uh, topics, and then I decide what we're going to talk about, and that usually cascades into a variety of different things that uh, has nothing to do with the topic and the, uh, the thumbnail. But for those who are clicking on this, so we just want to watch this going on, uh, let's talk about that icon looking F, what, what, F100, 1970s F100. It's from Icon Jonathan Ward. And there's a whole list of things going on. Um, I have the information here. And my friend, John Pearly from Car and Driver, Mm -hmm. uh, wrote it up and uh, basically they took the frame they stretched it and they made a whole custom frame whole custom suspension they put the 5 liter Coyote engine in it they made it to a 4 speed automatic transmission and the Brembo brakes and all stuff going on so he looks like he drove it and his impressions are basically this uh, it rides really nice it's got plenty of power but you're still sitting like you were in a 1970s truck so you're up closer to the steering wheel yeah, deep thoughts with uh, car and driver. So basically, that's it. So, but they want uh, the build price is four hundred thousand dollars. Now, whether you pay that to buy it or not, that's between you and Icon. And I don't know. I think some of the joy of driving an old truck is the fact that it rides like an old truck. I don't understand why you would want to modernize it, especially to that degree. Uh, that's a little insane to me. All right, so that is the story on that. I'm going to respond to comments, have a good time, talk about stuff, and, uh, yeah, go on stuff. So did you guys see my video on Facebook page? I don't know if you're on the Facebook fan. I'm trying to expand my page here. Um, I took and played with a tractor today. <laughs> yeah, it's good times. I like playing tractors. Tractors are really cool. So I um, had a good time with that. So if you guys are on the Facebook page, I'm editing the video on that computer of the Ram 2500. I'm hoping I have it done today, but... It's not looking likely. Sorry. Oh, and uh, that is not actually a flame off my head. It is the lamp on the fan that's creating a really weird thing. Hmm. Or it could be like when I rant about something, it's like... <sighs> okay, so that's what's going on with that. Well, I went... Oh. My YouTube app notified me that I was live. Thanks, YouTube. That's useful information. Okay, so uh, Richard says there's a purple one for sale in South Beach. Is it the Icon one or just a purple F100? Is it the F100? They had a Ranger. Didn't they have an F Ford F100 Ranger? Then they went the smaller Ranger? I don't know how it works. It's been a while since I've been to a classic truck show. Damn it. No classic truck shows lately, so I have to keep reminding myself what it was. Uh, Joe Taylor is here. Mr. Joe Taylor, I'm playing golf tomorrow and Thursday. Thank you very much. Uh, All Train Nation is here. Yes, our buddy David. Uh, Gene is here. How you all doing? Uh, come on, starting right up. <laughs> What's up? Uh, Brandon is here. Sean's Repairs and Reviews is here. Juan is here in the his house from Puerto Rico. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> it's nice to start with it. I, I used to follow this guy and used to do live streams. And he would start the live stream late. He'd be on chat talking about waiting for a couple more minutes. I'm like, no. Six o'clock, it starts, unless there's a technical issue. And, uh, yeah, it's time to, like, get on it. Be late. What the hell? Uh, oh, I got five bucks for my buddy Dave. Dave and I are uh, exchanging this over the uh, course of time. It should be one of those things, like, we'll be both in our deathbeds and, like, I gave you five bucks yesterday, you son of a bitch. You give me five bucks, too. Um, Jim, Tim seems – I'm a little – I am a little worn out. I – I've had like long days. I've had a lot of stuff going on, really long days. And so I'm going to uh, take a couple days to relax a little bit, but I'm still working like crazy. I mean, it's, it's, I probably won't be done until eight o'clock tonight. Not later. And I was out in the sun all day, like playing with that trailer and loading stuff up. So yeah, so it's, it's a lot of, a lot of work going on these days. It takes a lot to get this channel to keep going. Uh, a lot of uh, comments and things that I'm probably not doing a good job responding to. But how's the mileage? <laughs> right. $400,000 classic truck. And I'm going to worry about the fuel economy. 
Hmm. Don't think so. Uh, good one. Hello. Kelly is here. All right, Brandon, here we go. Brandon is dropping the big questions. Hmm. The 1969-1970 CK Series trucks had a grill with Chevrolet instead of a bow tie. Could that grill have been the inspiration for the current trucks? I feel like we need like, some Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. Um, actually, it probably is. So the designer of the Chevy trucks, I can see his face. I interviewed him once, and he grew up in uh, Pennsylvania, I think it was. And he grew up in a Chevy family. So he's always been around Chevy trucks. And so sometimes he goes back in the heritage. Let me adjust this a little bit. And uh, goes back in the heritage and looks at old creations for new trucks. So, yes, uh, Chevy does a good, one of those companies, like Ford does and other people do, look back in their heritage, see what they created before. And then they come up with something new. That's what's going on. So that's what they do. And a little water. Alterian Nation. Hey, Tom. Who is that? Oh, I see. Tim. Ah, I get Tom a lot. I never do. All right. Uh, can you comment on Ford telling dealers to not mark out the Broncos yet? See, dealers still planning to do it. Actually, Ford didn't say that at all. My friend, Joel Fetter with Motor Authority, broke the story. He reached out to Mike Levine with Ford, and he discussed whether the markup was going to happen. And Ford, through Mike Levine, said they are not telling the dealers to do diddly squat. Now, there is a conversation going on currently with the Ford Bronco, which um, I don't really want to bring up all the time. Ford Bronco, like craziness these days. Everything is about Ford Bronco. There is a conversation about Ford Broncos not getting to consumer hands like on dealer lots until later in 2021 or maybe even 2022 because demand is so hot for the reservations that they don't feel like they're going to have enough. I'm tearing the label off my whiskey bottle. They don't feel like they have enough to put on dealer lots. However, I think reservations are one thing and actually selling the trucks are a completely different matter. I missed. All right. Um, Thanks for being nice for responding to me. I respond to everybody. That's part of the problem. It takes me so much time. I get a lot of comments, which is fine. I respond. Tonight's live stream is brought to you by the folks at Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace bourbon. Um, I found this in the store, and I was over the moon, and so I've been drinking the heck out of it. Actually, it's a small bottle, and I've had a couple days, so there you go. Uh, yeah, I think vodka's giving me headaches, by the way. Uh, it's Hush Joe. Lamb no, no Lamborghini. Uh, F100 Ranger, then Rat. Then Ranger, yeah, yeah. I thought those was, uh, was gonna go, Gene. I thought they did F100, then they did that. Uh, F100 fan, but not to that extent. Clyde says, yeah, it's. I don't. I, I. I don't understand it. I've seen a lot of nice ones that are not that expensive, and I don't understand why. I understand Jonathan Ward. I mean, he's a very perfectionist kind of guy, and he really wants to make things perfect. But I think there's got to be something about boutique pricing and what who's going to buy it and supply demand still exist i guess not or there's that guy who bought a lamborghini with his covid19 uh, uh funds what do they call it the ppp loans he got so much ppp loans he went and bought a lamborghini for nine three hundred ninety-one thousand. he is juan's bestie bestie my wife had a purple ranger my wife had a purple ranger too is it purple or, or green she had a little ranger uh, hey, Eric Mings is here. How you doing? Uh, Joe's playing tomorrow on Friday. Absolutely nice. A Purple Ranger, really? Yeah, I think it, I think it, there was for shots. Tip and Tim take shots. <laughs> Percentage. <laughs> yeah, uh, Curry Stink. I like Curry and Chuck. Uh, especially Grant. Ranger was an upgrade style for to F one hundred starting in nineteen sixty eight or so. Custom was base F one hundred. Uh, James Saw Shaw says. Interesting. So the Ranger was an upgrade style. So it so basically it was a trim level, and then they expanded that to its own thing. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I do a lot of classic truck shows, and you see a lot of Chevys because the part availability is so big on Chevys. But And you see a couple GMCs here and there, but you don't really see many Fords. Fords are really hit or miss, and you definitely don't see any Dodge trucks. Uh, that's a really rare one. Thomas Darwin is here. Hey, Thomas Darwin. Uh Get back and okay. I drove a Hellcat, it was kind of fun. Almost got pulled over, but uh, I avoided that cop. Uh, Richard Lyman Linen Line. 
I want to say Lyman because there's a there's a town here that my father-in-law lives in that's L Y M A N, but you are Lynam. Lynam. Richard, Richard, how you doing? Let's just go with that. I have a 20 Ram 2500 Cummins Cube Cab 4x4 2019. I love it. Yeah, it's uh I have the 2020 version of that with the gas engine right now. And I did some loading at the farm with the truck, and there was a there was an issue. You have to watch the video and see. We had an issue. We had to we had to turn back. We could not make it to the salvage yard. Doo, doo, doo. Yeah, we couldn't make it there. So uh, there was an issue with that beginning of the yard. I don't want to say anything else because the video is going to drop tomorrow. Knock on wood if I get it done. And uh, yeah, I had a big issue with that uh, operation. I can't show you make a good design. Joe Taylor wants to know. I, you know, <laughs> saw a story in Jalopnik about how Chevy's improving the interior, but they're not fixing the most baffling problem with the Silverado. And that's the way it looks in the exterior. And I don't know. I've, I've seen a lot of Chevy Silverados lately. And um, the, 50, the 1500, I'm talking about specifically 1500. And I've kind of gotten used to that look. It's not like I don't love it, love it, but I'm more used to it. I still think the GMC looks much better. Um, in the heavy duty segment, I have to go GMC all day long. I, I just, the Chevy work truck Silverado 2500 and one ton just looks terrible. And I'm sorry, but that trail boss where it just goes like this and just drops off black into blackness. Nah, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of that look. If I, if, if I, if I ever buy a trail boss, I'm debating about doing that. I would I would get some what do they call it plastic dip. I get some colored plastic dip and make my own bottom piece of that that grill. Maybe we could do a video on that. You guys could argue with me about that. Maybe you guys argue with everything else. Uh, let's see. The couple look really good with the pickup truck plus SUV talk sticker on it. You know, Gene, Gene, you bring up a really good point. I've been thinking about making stickers, and I'm. Would you guys sticker so? Would you guys give me? Five bucks for a sticker, or is that too much? I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure out how it's going to work. I'm going to take my new logo. So the new logo, which is better to me. It makes more sense to people, right? So that moves around. So I take the new logo. I make this just a sticker. I thought about putting on back a Swede in the window, like a sticker. Which, by the way, I have two more hats. You want the new hat? And uh, FYI, Gene sent me a letter, and it was fantastic. Thank you very much, Gene. That was a very, very nice thing to do. I really appreciated that. All right. Uh, Jeep JL Rubicon is way better. He thinks the Ford Bronco is ugly. Ugly. Anyone knows that high prices seem to be surprisingly high considering the supply? Anyone else know surprise? Yes. Uh, why do Lamborghini, Lamborghini lives matter? No, they don't. How much shine would Uncle Jesse have to sell to afford that? Ah, <laughs> uh, be a lot of shine. Uh, people lose interest by late twenty-one or twenty-two. Yeah, there'll be something else, right? So, what I want to know is, I want to know how many people actually buy the Cybertruck, how many people actually buy the Rivian, and how many people actually buy the Bronco. Like, there's all these insane numbers or reservations like crazy. But if you're putting down a hundred dollars for for a vehicle. And it's a reservation. I mean, so you lose hundred bucks. It's not that big of a deal. And so I think it's I I I, I can't wait for the sales numbers to come out and actually get some real data. And uh, yeah, the cyber truck, by the way, made news. They plant picked a plant in Texas to build the truck there. And I think it's interesting. They're going to build a new plant to build that truck exclusively. It seems like a major investment for a truck that uh, did not seem like it had many reservations right at the bat. And it seems like it's getting much stiff competition from other manufacturers. So I don't know about Tesla's plan there. I'm not so sure. Uh, Lambo. Yeah, people you loan Lambo is uh, accelerating expense. Yeah, I don't. I, that was a strange one to me. I did not get enough money to buy a uh, uh, Lambo, by the way. I did get some PPP funding, which was really helpful, but I didn't get that much. Uh, so I was trim level on CK trucks before it came in some models, too. Yeah, that's right, Brandon. It, that is right. Gene, that wasn't a guy that was a Florida man. Well said. Well said. Gas engines in a Ram heavy duty. I don't know. I I did tow with it today, and I towed the trailer and towed the truck it's, until the snafu happened, the problem happened, which you'll have to watch the video for. And I will tell you that it did okay. I would much prefer the, the comments as far as towing, but 
it did all right. I mean, it wasn't like an amazing towing experience, but it did all right. And the trailer was just, it's just a tough trailer. Mm. Yep, I think it's High Sierra. I do agree. I think it's High Sierra. Chevy and Buick interiors are so busy and weirdly designed. GMC is a better looking truck. I agree. We always agree with you, but we love you. We always argue with you, but we love you. Yeah. Uh, GMC looks better. Sweet sticker, five bucks. No, I, yeah, no, I was thinking about putting like, I was going to make this a sticker and then put this in the back of the window of Swedes. So right now, Swedes got a sticker. Swedes, my 62 Chevy C10, if you don't know. Swedes got a sticker that says Sweden. I'm going to put this in the corner. I thought about doing stickers. Like, I, I, I'm not a big sticker guy. Uh, people send me stickers. They're up over here. I put them up on the thing. I just don't. I'm not a big sticker guy. Five bucks, five, ten bucks. Huh. Fair price for a sticker, Gene says. Yeah, stickers are cool. All right. Yeah, so I'm thinking about doing a sticker. I yeah, I need to add that to the list. Um, where's my massive list? Not this one, not that one. Oh, it's this one over here. This is a Calic XT6, by the way, which you guys didn't watch that video. Shame. And um, which I know somebody who just bought one of those, by the way. After watch my review, they bought one. It's huge. So we need stickers. Stickers. And I still gotta do that darn explorer ST. I just I forget who it was in his channel. Want me to do it, and I just keep. I, I will tell you this: I have some time next week. So this week, the Calic went away, the Ram goes away next week, and then I'm I'm like August twenty first, think with another vehicle. So this is the lineup. I don't know if I have the, the it's on my email. Uh, if you guys want to know, here it is. So the new drive shop, which is a different uh, organization out of Denver, is bringing me on August twenty first. The 2020 Lexus RX 350L all-wheel drive. The next would be the 2020 Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive RTL-E. The 2020 Sequoia, Toyota Sequoia's TRD Pro is coming after that. And the 2020 Hyundai, like Sunday, Santa Fe Limited all-wheel drive is after that. And then the Toyota RAV4 TRD off-road wraps up that set of list of vehicles. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like, I, I mean, it's nice to review them and I will do them, but uh, it didn't really get me a whole lot of excitement there. And no, no Nissan Titan. Uh, the might be different once you get your hands on your Bronc on the Bronco. Yeah, yeah I would think so. Bronco is going to be crazy. As on twenty, I haven't seen a Frontier yet. Reservation? Do you think Ford got on the Bronco? Oh, uh, David and I are talking about this. I would. I think it's. What do we say? What did I say? Forty thousand. 60,000, somewhere in that range. I talked to you, 2020 Titan. Dr. Hannah Strait is supposed to buy a Cybertruck. We'll see. Huh. Looked at lots this past weekend. At this rate, you'll never get a Cybertruck. Always runs behind. Yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not really interested in one that. James says, got a rare one. A 1961 Corvair FC 95 ramp side pickup. I've seen that. Uh, long time hot rod project. Uh, yeah. Big block Chevy 496 adapted to 64 Dodge 727 automatic. To a Ford 8.8 .8 rear end, all in the same subframe. What? What kind of Frankenstein powertrain is that? But I have seen that Corvair F, uh, FC 95 ramp side pickup. It's a very interesting vehicle, and I've seen it a few times at uh, online different places. It's very yeah interesting. Uh, the CEO of Lamborghini would not be no. I don't really care. Um, Powerwing Ram is a beast, though. It is. I saw one today while I was driving to 2500. I had to stop the video because I was, like, admiring it. <laughs> uh, mm. No, the letter was, letter was good. I watched this Samarion SUV video. Gene watches a lot of YouTube, I decided. If you buy a Tesla, you have to sign a waiver not to use Sue if it does something crazy like an autopilot runs into somebody. Not no Titan, no Subaru. Do they do they think you're TFL? Uh, Subaru and I have a very interesting relationship. I've had good times with them. I've been to their secret um, museum in uh, New Jersey, and uh, New Jersey. Yeah. Anyways, on the channel, I saw a Subaru brat and I and the uh, the guy, my PR rep, Chuck Ballard, is a really nice guy. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what the issue is with Subaru. I don't know why I don't get them. I like Subarus. I like freaking that Forester and the – they have another one. The bigger one. 
The Forester and the what? The, the three row. That's a nice SUV. I've, I wanted the wife to buy one it's full of safety equipment. I don't know. It just seems weird. Uh, much good to weird things that we go with for that. Oh, yes. Carl is here. News editor Carl. And Carl says, as much as I gravitate towards weird things that go over the $400,000 barrier, which he does, if you go to pickuptrucktalk.com, he has all sorts of weird stuff he finds. Uh, he even thinks it's steak. That's really crazy. Anyone see TFL's fashion show? I did somewhat see it. I watched some of it because Nathan was in it. Nathan's funny, but yeah. I don't know. That was a little bit, a uh, little bit much for me. Uh, let's see. Fun decades long project. Google. What? Yeah. There's. They have some new apparel they were showing off, and uh, they were all wearing the free TFL hashtag shirts, which Ford is never going to deal with these guys again. <laughs> I just. I don't know. Uh, uh, Gene says YouTube is better than the Hallmark Christmas movie marathons. <laughs> I agree. Yes, there's a TFL fashion show. It's it's a really weird thing. I yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, we need your reaction to fashion show <laughs> live reaction. <laughs> so, oh, was that those the people that like sing a song and then the voice uh, uh, voice coach watches with the song? I've watched some of those stuff. Yeah, I uh, I, I I don't know. I don't know. They have, yeah, I know they have five channels. It's just crazy over there. I'm not gonna have that many channels. Uh, Brandon, do you think you don't get Subarus because you're in the same region as TFL and they don't have a relationship with Subaru? Um, I think it hurts. Yeah, so I, I mean, whatever. I think I think it hurts. I think there's going to be some concern with getting Fords in my area because of what TFL has done. Um, that's why I'm friends with the Ford dealer. That's a huge thing for me. Uh, it, it does it does hurt. I have had Subarus in the past. They just don't have a big fleet. They're not a. They're they're very small company, so they have a big fleet. So they may only have two or three vehicles nationwide. If there was one that I really wanted to to drive, I probably could make it work if I was like animate about driving it. My issue is that I don't really care. I I just I wish I did. I wish I, I have a friend Aaron Turpin who lives in Cheyenne, and his entire business model is reviewing cars. And his entire focus is driving as many people's cars as possible. And he is emailing people like crazy to get vehicles. I just don't care. I, I, I It may sound weird, but from my vantage point, my reviews do the worst versus the stories. I think my journalism is more about the stories and news, the Silverado with the diesel. You got to drop transmission to check the belt. Um, Interviewing the the Ford's emission guys, um, things that I think are more interesting. Me. Million mile trucks are more interesting to me. Interviewing owners are more interesting to me, and so I just I just don't care. And that's been my biggest problem as a journalist, as a self promoter too. If I if I, sh I if I should hire somebody, it should I should hire um, not a manager but a a business associate or something that would help push for more press loans and help push more, more opportunities for that stuff. Um, because I just, I don't do a good job of that. I just, I just don't think it's, I think when you fight over a f press loan, I think it all goes downhill. And so, I mean, I could open up No, I, I mean, I, the reverse of things could be like this. I could decide to cover everything and I could get cars, sedans, everything. And I just don't, feel like that's worth my time because I don't have the outlet for it. And I don't feel like you guys would even care. I've done a few car things on this channel as, as a kind of a trial thing and it doesn't work. And so I, I just don't want to do that. And so when you limit yourself like I am and then you don't care, it's a, it's a double edged thing. I don't want to do this. It seems to be more critical for now. <laughs> I've heard that comment too. The guy that coded my garage was my fan of my channel. He actually said, he goes, it's really strange that Ford said that because they're really big on Ford. Like it was, I, it was really interesting. I feel like Roman is really grumpy all the time. It, it, he, he's interesting. I don't know. He's been this. This whole thing has kind of been bizarre. Any rumor of new Baja by Subi? No, they won't build it. They don't have a production facility for it. Tim, are you hiring? Where do I send my resume? <laughs> um. I, 
I'm not, I don't have the funds to hire anybody else. So I'm, basically the website is paying for the website people and the YouTube trying to make me go full time. I want to close my creative services business to do this full time. So I'm not really hiring anybody. And I, and here's the thing. <laughs> There's a certain guy on YouTube that I'm trying to chase and he works with TFL sometimes. There you go. There's my teaser. I'm not saying it by name. And he sent me an email, looked, seeing if he it was hiring because his channel is not doing as well as my channel, I guess. And he wants his unemployment's running out. So he's trying to figure out what to do. And I, and the reason I bring this up is not because he emailed me, not because of that, because he's, he's, he's a good guy, is that I don't know that I like the idea of having multiple people on this channel. Right. So I think with TFL, things get lost a little bit. Like, did Tommy say this? Did Roman say that? There was something going on. I think it hurts me being the only person. So if somebody gets mad at me and I said something they didn't like, well, they're not going to follow the channel. Right. And so I think it hurts me sometimes and it helps me other times because I just feel like that's too many different noises. No, it's not Everman Driver. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting how that works. Everman Driver, Dave, Dave works his butt off. And good night, the man shows off his muscles like he's some fitness girl. <laughs> but like, dude, I've seen enough. Um, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think I want to have more personalities in a channel. So I don't want that. I, I really think um, somebody to help me get more organized with video production, more organized with vehicles coming in, more organized with... Uh, um, the little things. I know I'm missing things, and it's just tough right now because it's just it's hard to do it. No, it's not every man. You guys are like, you guys are off. You're not. It's kind of nice, you know. You might lose the production or narrative. Yeah, I, I don't. This channel is about trucks and SUVs, but it's also about me. Begrudgingly, I talk about myself more than I want to, but I think if I had additional people on here, additional, it'd be interesting. You want to be behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah. I need somebody to help coordinate things and things like that. I think that that'll be the next hire. Would be a part time. I'm, I'm I'm losing the word for it. It's like it's a part time assistant or, or somebody that somebody that would work on the YouTube channel. Somebody who would analyze videos, do well, give me ideas, and make new videos, building on videos done well in the past. Somebody to help uh, think about vehicles I should be reviewing. Somebody to do stuff. It's not Scotty. <laughs> it's not Scotty. Um, yeah, I think there's I think there's something to, to be done as far as that kind of stuff. And somebody else hired this person. I can't remember. The, I don't know the title. Scotty. Titan. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Kelly. Uh, understanding how to get somebody to email dealerships on my behalf to, to coordinate some stuff, to go drive the Titan review. I mean, that, that'd be awesome if, if I could make it to Denver. If I had somebody else who was handling that stuff, it'd be, allow me to do that stuff. I just, I cannot get to Denver. Just can't get it on there. Um, yeah, so Brian says, I agree with you with keeping about YouTube's one main person. Makes it easier to watch. I think so. I, I just, I, I think it just gets too overwhelming. Like, I think people that like me or don't. If you don't, hey, no harm, no foul. If you do, great. Hang around. I, I just, I don't want to get involved in that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, I, I feel like you get burned out on people's personalities too. Like, I'm trying to stay positive all the time and do fun stuff, and that's that's the channels, and that's and it's real, right? I mean, that, I literally do this stuff every day. I, I literally play with trucks and play golf and go to the farm, and I had a lot of fun with that tractor today. I tell you that damn much. Um, help farmers bring in crops. I go hunting. I mean, literally, who I am. There's there's I drink whiskey probably too much. I mean, it's just it's like. I, it's just, that's what it is. And so I don't, uh, I don't think it's fake at all. I think there is some fakeness out there and I think it's easy to spot when a guy's fake or not. And that just pisses me off. Uh, any reply from the Chevy dealer? No. And I think I need to go in the person in person to the Chevy dealer. <laughs> I, I do have a strategy. Um, there's a lot of people in this area don't know who I am. And so I have a, uh, it's a lot of business people too. I think that play a lot of golf. And so I'm going to sponsor a team next month, if it happens, at the Scotts Bluff Country Club Pro-Am. They bring in a bunch of professional golfers. You play two rounds of the pro, and the pro plays Saturday, Sunday by themselves. I think how that works. 
and then the winner takes home. But I'm going to buy a whole sign with my logo on it, and I'm going to make up my own sign up and uh, talk about the channel and how they subscribe. Sport local. Damn it, there's 30, 40, 50,000 people in this area. I should have that many subscribers from this area. Yeah, right? I think I'm a small business, damn it. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. So, it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, I like you too, Juan. Oh, I like you too. Uh, Amanda Whiskey, we like your honesty. Uh, I feel like Roman and not yeah, and Nathan fight. Andre is the monkey in the middle. It is interesting. Nathan always has to say, but that's it's you know, TFL has built a great channel, they've built a big business. I just, I'm different, I want to be a little different than they are. Yeah, he does get pissed. Um, I think you're on something with a person to contact dealers, manufacturers, researcher, huge addition. Yeah, I, I, I would like to have somebody who would help behind the scenes, uh, somebody who runs some Google Trends, somebody to help that kind of stuff. And so, you know, the idea right now, talking about business, is the business is that the website is by itself. I have a managing editor over there, Carl's news editor. That's fantastic. That stuff is going great. And so the YouTube channel will be the next thing, and I'm just debating when and how to do that, and who would the right person be, and what do I really need? That'd be the biggest question. What, what would that really look like? Um, sponsorships. There's a lot of things that, that go to this channel I'm just missing. But I'm the blonde guy from TFL. Oh, um, Stephen Elmer. Are you thinking about Stephen Elmer? He's Canadian. TFL is too. Roadshow? Yeah, I like Roadshow. Um, I like Emmy Hall. Emmy and Hall, I've been friends for a long time. And Roadshow does a really good production values on their videos. And I'm always watching their stuff. I, I thought Emmy did a great job. Or not, not Emmy, but uh, Lynn Woodward from, uh, did she do it for the KBB? I think KBB. Lynn's a great lady too. And she did a great job in the Defender, um, Land Rover Defender. And it's funny because the Land Rover guy, the PR guy and I are pretty good friends. But I just... I just don't have a whole lot of um, audience for that product. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, Emmy is great. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that uh, I've been doing. So every Friday night, I get together with some writers, and we have a Zoom, automotive journalist kind of Zoom kind of stuff. And uh, I think it's one of the things that's missing in the industry right now is, is, is we're not getting out there and mingling either, which is important for me because – it's important to get your name out there with other people and also to hear other people's viewpoints. You become kind of a silo when you're home all the time by yourself because you don't have the different uh, exchanges. So I spend a lot of time on Facebook and different places because you need that. You need people to tell you you're full of, oh, full of. It's my favorite sign. I love that sign. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think there's lots of uh, opportunity there. There's a lot of. Um, this is kind of really going a weird conversation. There's a lot of discussion right now on whether or not the industry comes back the way it was. And I just heard that CES got canceled. CES. Having a pretty girl from the TFL. Wasn't that Emmy? Or somebody else from Pretty Girl. I know Roman has had a lot of trouble with Pretty Girls in that um, he doesn't like the comments on a channel. And so he feels like if he puts a pretty girl up on his channel, the responses he gets on the comment sections just really pisses him off. So, yeah. Oh, people were saying that Tommy was dating her for those other rumors. Boy, you guys have a lot of TFL rumors. <laughs> That's a lot of more than I'd think about. Sam is here. Sam to sham. Yes, please, like, change the conversation. Uh, um, some fellas got to get their melons in. Same as Mr. Ma Majestic with his old pickup and some others you ain't got no melons. <laughs> Effie and the chemistry lady. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Majestic with his old pickup. Mr. Majestic. I don't know that one. Mr. Majestic. We shall fire up the Google. Fire up the Google. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Majestic Ford. All right. Oh. Charles Bronson. Whoa. I know Charles Bronson. What happened to Mike from TFL? That, that's his name. Mike. Oh, they well, they go through some people. No comment, Brandon. They go through some people at times about, you know, who uh, go through staff. They always hire new stuff, uh, new, te new team members. 
Which makes sense. I've been very fortunate. Carl's been a news editor on Pickup Truck Talk for a long time now, like a couple of years. And uh, I think Jill will be there for a couple of years as well. So I've been very fortunate to keep people, um, even though I pay like crap. Weird quasi thing there. But I'm very honest with what I pay. Uh, she's a boyfriend owned an E85 BMW. You, you, can, you guys really get the knowledge going. This is really impressive. I feel like I'm like playing some Disney trivia game about TFL. Uh, he moved to the West Coast. I met him walking around downtown about a year ago. Oh, Mike from TFL. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think people move. People do change. I mean, that's it's happens. PR reps change all the time, too. It's always a constant change in the, in the industry. Things change. The only constant is change. I think I've heard that somewhere. It's like a shirt, like a think like shirt. Yeah, so uh, things to move around. I'm not changing. I'm not moving. I'm staying right here on YouTube land, live in your living room, or across the globe, wherever you're watching, with uh, just 25 people tonight. That's all right. Some nights you do good stuff. Some nights you don't. I think Tim should try to review an old Isuzu pickup. I've seen them in town. There's people that have Isuzu pickups in town. Tim, who's your PR rep from Nissan? Um, the new guy, uh, Steve Parrott, just came back over. Uh, it was Wendy Payne, but Steve Parrott... And I played golf with Steve. Steve is a stand-up nice guy. And he's now with um, he's now covering the uh, Colorado market again, the Rocky Mountain market. I like Steve a lot. I, I, I don't think Steve's issue is me getting a Titan. I think there's other people. But I don't, you know, it's from my standpoint, is the Nissan Titan is the worst selling full-size truck in the market. And it's the worst selling by far. And so I did a Google search on Google on Google Trends. If you go Google Trends and type in Chevy Silverado, Ford F-150, Ram 1500, and Nissan Titan, it is startling how many people are not searching for the Nissan Titan. So am I missing something? Sure. But I, nobody's watching that stuff anyways. Sasan is here. Um, it, yeah, Ken's a good guy. Uh, have you ever met Carlos Ghosn? I, I, I was um, that close to Carlos Ghosn. When they unveiled the Nissan Titan uh, redesign, oh gosh, David's not here probably anymore. When the redesign happened, they, they, uh, they debuted that truck and at the Chicago, Detroit, whatever it was. And I was that, I was that close to him. I was asking him some questions. I was going to, I asked him a question about the, XD, whether they saw much white space. They said they did. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Oh, 2015. Yeah, it's interesting that um, they did that. Oh, yes. I was that close. I was that close. I missed him at the airport. I didn't miss him at the airport. I did I did see him. I did. I was that close and I asked him a question. There's a, there's a photo I have of a big media scrum. So there's uh, a bunch of journalists all together, like shoulder to shoulder, like crowd-wise. And I'm right in the middle of that. I'm right next to some Wall Street Journal guys and some um, AP writers, stuff like that. I'm asking questions. It was like it was a cool journalist moment. I mean, that was cool. But I, you know, I wanted to get answers from the top. And Carlos was always good for a good quote. Uh, Brandon, it's hard to just find reviewing the Nissan Titan when it's hard to find a single one on any dealer lots. Yes, yeah, I have the same issue. Um, Gone was ghosted. Have you ever met? Alfonso Albesa. Alfonso Albesa. That doesn't sound familiar. Who is that? Fire up the Google. What's the Google say? Uh, Alfonso. Alfonso. L. Albesa. American auto designer. President for global design for Nissan Corporation. Oh, that guy? Hmm. I feel like I have. I probably have. Ultima. Huh. Yeah, I probably have met that guy. I see a lot of designers like that at dinners and different events. 2016 Trudeau show. Cold January. Oh, yeah, you guys are looking up. I did... Alfonso follows me on Instagram. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I uh, I did I did meet him. Kinky Joe, guys. Yes, I yes yes yes. All right, so uh, I did I did meet him. I I know one of the designers for Infinity. He's on my Facebook page, and he's got a really big thing for like 
Mercedes Benz like it is, and so he's always trying to design stuff that way with Infinity products. It's kind of a crazy guy. Gene, do all designers wear black sport jackets? So I have a funny designer story, and uh, <laughs> I uh, all right, I'll tell you the story. The story is this: when the Nissan Titan got unveiled, and then the first drive program was in Phoenix. And I flew down to Phoenix, and we're going to drive it. And the interior designer, who was a friend of mine on Facebook, had sh shows up to a truck event. He had driven from California to Phoenix. Not a big deal, right? Just drove across. And he shows up at the truck event, and he's wearing a fancy shirt, white jeans, and boat shoes. Like the, the, the totally loafer boat shoes. Now, look at this guy. And I looked at the truck and I looked at this guy again. And if you remember, that truck has a heated seat button like all the way across the side. And it's just, I don't know. They didn't really do to me a good job in designing that. Anyways, I said to the peer rep at the time, I was like, you know, probably you don't bring a designer to a truck show with white pants. <laughs> that's not the case oh you've heard this one i'm oh i'm the old guy now i'm telling i'm telling stories again i'm sorry i'm sorry i forget who i'm telling stories to but yes that was uh that guy and then the other guy the exterior designer and i had a went rounds about it uh, the exterior because he was watching um they're watching movies on inspiration and he was watching like uh the titan the the um the four the 400 the uh the greek movie the 300 He's watching that. He's watching a bunch of Braveheart, different stuff. Yeah, so it was interesting. Back in my day, Tim. Yeah. No, Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, you never heard this one. Oh, sorry. I I forget the stories I have because I just enjoy a good story. I'm a storyteller. That's what I am by nature. I'm a storyteller. That's what this was. So, yeah. So, it was uh, pretty interesting how that's going to work out. How that story works. Funny. And he's a good guy. Just strange. Very, very strange. I have issues with that. I, I really have a lot of issues with culty design. Um, Culty Design is who designs Toyota vehicles, and I feel like they rely on those guys way too much, and I, I don't think they do a good enough job. I just, I don't know. I have, I have issues with their designs. Tell us more stories. Oh, goodness. More stories. Did I tell you the time that Lynn Woodward and I were in a tank in Minnesota? Did I tell you the, 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 the tank story? Strange like Scotty's in your closet <laughs> tied up. No, I, uh, did I tell you the tank. Did I tell you how we got the tank story? Have you guys ever, have I ever shared the tank story with you guys? That's interesting. I mean, on top of my head, I just thought tank. Looked at the window, the weather's crappy. It's tank. No, I haven't said tank story. No, Alfonso was not one with white pants. Um, it's a different guy. Um, <laughs> you guys, I haven't told this thing. So a couple years ago, oh, goodness. Three or four years ago now, I was on Facebook, and one of the guys on somewhere one of the media groups posted that there's a tank drive adventure in Texas. And I was like, well, Texas, I'm always down in Texas. And so another guy who's a peer rep for driveatank.com, Jared, uh, my friend Jared, he said, hey, I got one in Minnesota. And so I reached out to Jared through Instant Messenger, and I said, hey, you got a tank drive in Minnesota? And he says, yeah. And I'm like, game on let's do it and he's like really i'm like yeah but i said how about i invite a bunch of other people and make it a whole day so that way you know we have a whole thing they have a uh the tank drive company has a limousine they can pick you up from the minneapolis airport uh st paul minneapolis airport and they can drive you down to the tank adventure it's like an hour away it's, it's pretty close and so i had set it all up with all these journalists and i put a whole thing i'm auto on uh, the auto media group and i said hey you know cash in your air miles fly out there do a story it's really cool stuff and I had everybody canceled. Nobody wanted to do it. And I had I, I literally got to the point where I had to pick a date. And I was like, it's May 7th. I think it was 8th or 4th. I don't know what it was. The first part of May. And so I did that. And uh, I picked the date. And so I grabbed my friend Aaron, who lives down in, uh, who's down in Pine Bluffs time. Now he's in Cheyenne. I said, hey, you're going with me. And I said, here's what we're going to do. I'd reached out to Nissan and got a Pathfinder. And so I said, all right, I got the Pathfinder. I'm going to pay for the gas. You pay for the hotel room. And so we split a 
a, a room, right? Two queens and, and went up there to share a bed. Come on, two queens, grown men. And I said, we'll drive up there to Minneapolis. Uh, it's, it's like south, southwest Minneapolis. It's along, the, it's along the southern border there. And I said, let's drive up there. We'll review the Nissan Pathfinder. There's a museum in South Dakota. that's uh, right in the middle of the state. It's got a long car on it. I said, how about we stop there and we'll do photos and such. And maybe we can sell the stories of that museum on our way up to Minnesota. And he was like, yeah. So I got him involved. I said, let's do this. So let's, let's do this together. And we'll, we'll go up there. And I reached out to truck trend and they were going to buy the story. I thought, okay, they're going to buy the story and that's going to pay for the gas. And I'm going to do a video. I just started doing video at the time. So I'm going to do a video on this tank drive. You can watch, it's still on this channel. You can, you can drive and type it, type, type in drive a tank and find the video I did. And uh, it's, it's all right. I mean, I learned a lot from this, but uh, so we, we drive up there and we get there when we arrive, he's got a, um, it's a building. He's got a shooting range in there. It's kind of really cool. He's got antique weapons he does with, it's really cool place. And inside was um, the dining area was turns out to be Lynn Woodward and her, and her dad. And I had never met Lynn Woodward before. And so I was like, Hey, you know, who's this person? Well, it turns out she had saw the invite, but never responded, but then just showed up, which I was fine with. I, I just wanted to make it better for Jared's worth as well. And there were, and driver tank was going to give me access. So I thought, Hey, let me try to beef it up. Cause I wasn't right. My uh, truck turns a big outlet back then too. It still is, but I just wanted more. I just wanted to give this guy more publicity. And so we go up there and we end up uh, touring his, his um, area. He's got a bunch of tanks in there cause he's working on different stuff. Uh, his family owns a, a, a landscape business. And so basically they're working on bulldozers all the time. And it's a diesel engine with tracks as a bulldozer. And guess what a tank is? It's a diesel engine with tracks. So it's very, very similar idea, even though you're thinking of tank and bulldozer, how can those be similar? But it's, it's a diesel engine with tracks. It's the same idea. And so we end up spending the day driving around different tanks. And at one point we're in an, an armored personnel carrier. Uh, it, it was like, it's, 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 it's technically a tank, not a personnel carrier, but it's a weird quasi it, it's right in between us. It's right in the space. And it turns out Lynn's dad was a tank commander back in the army. I think it was. And so he knew about tanks. And so it was really interesting having him there. But uh, as we're driving this APC or something like that, I think you can watch it on the video. There's a spot in the, you have a driver and then in the back, there's like side by side, the two long benches for seating. You stare at each other basically in the back and the door opens up and you walk out of your M16, you take care of business. That, that's kind of how it works. And the, and the personnel carrier has got a, a, a turret on it, a, like a mounted gun. So it technically is a tank. Yeah. APC M113 probably. Yeah. I, I think that's probably right, Kelly. It, it's, it's one of those things. So it technically was a tank, but it was a personnel carrier too. It's a weird thing. And we're driving along, and there's a spot in the trail he built. So behind, they own a bunch of property, and behind the property of the tank drive, he had a bunch of woods. And so he decided that the best thing to do was build a trail in the backwoods and comes around. And so he had a spot where he had a water crossing. He basically flooded the area with a pond, and he drove through it. And it's really cool. The, you guys got to look at the video. And, uh, I, yeah, I was wearing an American Titan hat in the video. And so if you watch the video, you'll see going through the water. Well, the guy had told us beforehand, he said, when you go through the water with the APC, make sure you close the hatch. So there's a hatch to look out, right? So you can just kind of look out and see what's going on and close the hatch. Well, Lynn didn't hear that part. And Lynn hit the water at full bore. And I've never heard a girl shriek so badly when the water came rushing through the hatch and just drenched her from head to toe. So Aaron and I are in the back with her dad and we're just busting our ass off laughing because here's all this water. She's like, ah, it's going crazy. And so she just totally, totally got drenched. And the rest of the day, she was like wringing out her clothes. And I mean, it's one of those things where the suitcase was back at the hotel room, whatever, because I think she flew in with her dad. And so she had to be in, in wet clothes all day. And I met and, and really, we had a good time. And so we had lunch, and then the, the, the day kind of concluded, and she went off. But I will tell you this. I'm not a half-bad writer. I can write some stuff pretty decent. I've never been more outwritten in my life than Lynn's story. Lynn, because of her dad, was able to use her dad in her story. 
And I thought my story in Truck Trend was cool. She kicked my butt. I mean, she absolutely made her story was so much better. And I don't often read other people's stories, but I read her story and it was it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. She got to basically go with her dad, drive a tank with her dad, and understand what it was like for her dad in the military and really make this deep personal connection with him all over again. And I was like, I drove a tank. It was pretty badass. Enter. And she's like, I always wanted to know more about my dad's upbringing and who he was as a person. And we got to drive a tank and connect. And I was like, tip my hat to you because I am not going to do that. So yeah, but uh, it was a fun event. And I hear now that, um, the guy was a really cool guy too. We, we had a lot of time talking, and I actually have something. I have something from that. Um, I found it the other day. Mm -hmm. I was cleaning out the the my keychain stuff because I'm getting rid of those cars, and I have it right here. This he's got a skit. So the skit is, hey Duggo, the skit is, is that you drive over a car and you demolish the car. It's a funny kind of skit he came up with. It's kind of corny, but it's funny. We did it in the video and sort of like that. But when you do it and you drive over the car, he gives you the keys to the car and you take a photo with it. But he also gives you a, um, a dog tag. And a dog tag says, I don't know if I can see it. It says, it's kind of, there he goes. I crushed a car with a chieftain tank at driveatank.com. Yep. I, it, yep. So th there you go. There is my, I'll show it one more time. I don't, yeah, there we go. It's, it's kind of it's hard to see with the silver, but there it is. That's that's the drive a tank story, drivetank.com. And there's my car keys from the, the the tank that I or the car destroyed. It was a Ford. This is a Hyundai key, which is funny because he gave me the wrong key. But it's, it was a Ford, um, a Ford Escort wagon, I think it was. And what he does is he goes and and buys a bunch of junk cars, and then he crushes junk cars. And you can um, you can pay money at like a go out there as a corporate uh, event or as a, a bunch of dudes bachelor party and, and crush cars. Is drive a tank still open? It is. Is it? The, the, no, it's not the place in Texas. This is in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota. And uh, you can go there and uh, drive a tank. It's, it's a pretty cool spot. It's a little small town and you get up there and you drive th in, in through town. And it's really weird. You'd like drive through main street and you go like three blocks and here's all these guys driving tanks. <laughs> It's the most bizarre thing. It's really crazy. Shiro Nakamura, who wore No, it wasn't Shiro. There is one in Texas. There is another one in Texas. Uh, thanks. It is a fun story. I was really appreciate the story. I, I had a really good time with that. And so my friend Aaron and I ended up driving back. We got to the museum. There's a wooden Cadillac. Somebody built a Cadillac out of wood at the museum. And uh, we tried, I tried to sell that story. I did a video on it. Nobody bought it. I tried like hell. I did do a story... There's a there's a Toyota Stout there at that uh, museum, which was the first Toyota pickup in the United States, and so I thought it was a really interesting pickup. So I did a story on that. So yeah, you betcha. Oh yeah, eh? <laughs> you betcha. Um, yeah. So there was a there's a cool, cool museum. What's the name of that damn museum? Ken Lee? No, it's not Ken Lee. You guys are really your knowledge of design. Joe's like on the Nissan like designer like LinkedIn page trying to find stuff up. But South Dakota Auto Museums, it's a big one. Museum. Um, Pioneer, the Pioneer Auto Museum in Murdo, South Dakota. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting museum. It's, I don't know, it's it's pretty bizarre kind of museum. Casota, Minnesota. <laughs> yes, Casota, Minnesota. Yeah, I remember saying that because you were... I so I, I mean he grew up in Michigan so I understand the uh, uh, UP accent but uh, hey you want to go drive a tank in Casota Casota Minnesota eh yeah Casota Minnesota yeah so and there is one in Texas there's one I want to do the one in Texas the one in Minnesota that he's actually figured out how to you can fire the Sherman he's got dummy rounds for it so you actually hear the bang but he's looking at understanding no it's not Giovanni it, I'm gonna have to find this guy now I, I he's on my he's on my Facebook. Are you on? Oh, you may be on my Facebook. No, that, it's, it's a guy, not Diane Allen. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's, 
he's got it figured out the fire, but what he doesn't understand with the tank and he didn't know at the time was the firing order. Like whether you said aim ready, aim fire, or if you said sight target, target locked fire target. And he said the U S military wasn't like telling him the answers to that question. They, they wouldn't discuss it. And so he had to, he was asking Lynn's dad about the order firing order. He wanted to make it as realistic as possible. And he buys uh, things on surplus. He actually bought, eight tank transmissions on surplus and he's got them all over the warehouse he's got like a huge warehouse like he would with um pallets and he's got pallets of transmissions and engines that he can put up there so it's it's really it's really interesting it's, it's really yeah interesting stuff joe is really trying to figure this out joe i i will find the guy's name uh, so now i don't even know um because i i don't forget his name but uh, all right there you go there's there's 55 minutes. Any other questions? I did see you got a puppy. I saw Andre drove all the way somewhere to get a puppy. Yeah, interesting. I know. That, I, I did see. I saw the puppy in the thumbnail. I don't I don't. I really haven't had a chance to watch much TFL lately. Tim, whenever you're ready for that part-time research manufacturer guy, hit me up. I will, Brandon. You've done some good work with that uh, AC vents. <laughs> um, TFL puppy is Tommy. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm just, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to be ready for that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm still just debating that one. I need to build a garage first. I want to buy a truck for a second. I need to get some things done, but, uh, there you go. That is an hour. I'm going to call it quits. Um, <laughs> you guys keep at done. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 Ram 2500 video box talk drops tomorrow. I still have the Ford expedition. I need to get done. My friends Mercedes and Andy Lilenthal sent me a video. They bought a um, Mitsubishi Declaren or something. It's a van. That's a diesel van. It's kind of a weird video. I think kind of weird thing because that that's what they do. So that video is coming out too, and uh, always more good stuff. So hey, as always, thanks for watching. You want to build my garage? Send me a quote. All right. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you down the road.